Uh, this video shows the nesting of the common kestrel. The field fairs didn't much like the nest and this is the result, droppings all over the walls. Overall the nesting was a success though, with seven young birds hatching. The parents are in for a lot of work in feeding the kids, but they have what it takes. The male is a good hunter and it's been a good mole year. The young birds begin practicing cutting the prey to pieces at an early age. Mainly the distribution and cutting of the prey is up to the female while the male does the hunting. In case of a larger prey, the young birds wouldn't be able to cut it by themselves anyway. The cutting and distribution happens in a surprisingly orderly fashion, though with quite a ruckus. The feeding is interrupted by a threat nearby but the parents managed to drive away these rascals as well. In this brood's case, the prey consists mainly of rodents, large and small, with the addition of a few birds and a small reptiles. On a good mole year such as this, there was no need to settle for insects or other less nutritious creatures. Uh, this brood grew up quite evenly because of the ample supply of food. A few females developed faster than others and the last ones to leave the nest were males and thus smaller, shedding their baby fluff just a bit later than the others. Almost every young hawk living in a birdhouse becomes acquainted with the bird ringer, and this is how it looks like from the bird's point of view. The birds are typically moved away from the nest while they are being ringed. Uh, they undergo different types of examinations, their gender is defined and a numbered ring is attached to their foot, which is later used to track the bird's life. The birds are very calm about the ordeal. After the ring is set, the ringer lays the birds down under his wing, well, where they'll wait for their return to the nest. The parents' behavior during this process can differ. These parents were quite calm about it. With a few thousand ringed common kestrels behind him, this experienced bird ringer does his job smoothly and firmly. The ringing provides a lot of additional information besides just the traditional tracking of migration routes.
time to get back to the birdhouse, again from the bird's point of view. The ringer waves each bird goodbye, or rather, the hand movement is there to prevent the young bird from falling out. With the last wishing of good luck to the birds, the session is over. And the birds are slowly beginning to shed their baby fluff, almost beginning to look like proper birds of prey now. At least this one is eyeing the camera with a hawk's eye. Now the birds are big enough to see the outside world now, which is beginning to interest them more and more. The feeding is still done by the female parents, and even with bigger heads, the process remains orderly, and the feeding noises are less chaotic than before. The runt of the family manages to successfully beg for a treat as well. With their bellies full, it's nice to observe what's going on in the outside world. Farming devices are something the birds are guaranteed to be dealing with in the future, so it's best to learn to get along with them. After all, they share a common hunting ground, even if the prey is different. The birds are starting to look like proper hawks now, even if the face still has a more gentle look to it than a grown-up hawks. So this is what a hawk's eye looks like. Next up for observation are the people and their dogs. Looks like it's the wife and her sister, beautiful women, at least in comparison to the auras of a bird of prey, as the beauty-defining saying goes here in Finland. The birds are growing up fast and spend more and more time outside the nest. Uh, here the barn swallows are being a nuisance. Flying practice has begun with rigorous flapping of wings to strengthen the muscles. At dusk, they're just hanging around and posing. Each day, more of the birds venture out to test their wings, with the parents supporting such activities as well. Practice makes perfect. Those who've developed the fastest are beginning to look quite hawk-like already. They're still not able to hunt, however, so the parents keep on actively feeding them. The brood is becoming more scattered, which makes it harder for the parents to monitor them. Here they're wondering how that one on the wall will be able to handle itself. In time it does though. The differences in development between the birds can be seen in the manner they leave the nest in. First climbing on the porch and then the roof, freeing up space on the porch for the runt as well.
Uh, at this point, the parents are frequently encouraging the birds to follow them into the outside world. Even after that happens, the birds will still return to spend the night in the nest for about a week. Here's some morning exercise going on. The day spent practicing hunting skills such as hunting flight, seen here, and other skills of living, taking sand baths and working out their leg muscles with running exercises such as this one. The brood stays together in the outside world, sometimes on trees, sometimes on the ground. On the ground they are more active, doing all manner of jumping, frolicking and exploring, maybe even catching a few insects. Uh, but likely the main purpose is to work out the legs, which are the most important hunting tools. At the first sign of danger, however, they will fly up on the trees, where they will also spend their nights together. Here the entire brood can be seen together, apart from the most developed female, who tends to spend the night on a higher branch by herself. They also like to spend time on good vantage points on buildings, such as the upper rim of the door here. At this point, the birds have fully learned how to hunt and are leaving their birthplace, moving towards southern areas of Europe, perhaps returning back the next year, perhaps not. <laughs>